Excellencies, my colleague ministers, Excellencies from regional and international organizations, representatives from the diplomatic corps, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very new to this forum, which has been here for now four years. And uh, I would like to commend those who have organized this forum, the foundation, and all those le leaders and stakeholders who have made it happen over the years. And I would like to address my regards and uh, our sadness to Srimati Susma Swaraj of India, who was so vocal in making this foundation and this conference a success over the years. I would like to thank my honorable colleague from the Seychelles for addressing one of the key issues tomorrow in New York, the representative, permanent representative of Mauritius on behalf of the contact group to fight piracy off the coast of Somalia is meeting the Secretary General, Mr. Gutierrez, to address what my colleague raised as one of the major concerns of piracy of the coast of Somalia. Tomorrow, the representative of Mauritius, which is the chair of the contact group to fight piracy off the coast of Somalia, is meeting the Secretary General because the Seychelles have done their bit, which was to arrest, prosecute, sentence, and imprison the pirates who were caught. But some were sentenced to beyond 30, 40 years. But recently, Somaliland decided to free some of the pirates, 19 of them, before their term, that is about eight, nine years, whilst they had been in prison for more than 30. And in Puntland, there was a decision also to release the pirates before their term. And this sends a very strong signal that the fight against piracy is still a major concern. And the release, the pre-release of pirates before their term sends a very wrong signal. So that's why Mauritius, as the chairperson chair of the contact group to fight piracy off the coast of Somalia, tomorrow will put up a case with the Secretary General of the United Nations to address this key issue so that this is a major concern at the Security Council. Ladies and gentlemen, as we have seen through all the speeches which have been given here, that the Indian Ocean has witnessed mounting threats. Geopolitically today, it has become a very important area because of the, the trade in petroleum products, because of the maritime exchanges between the Middle East and Asia, between Africa and Asia. Now the ocean today has become an area where all the threats are there. And the conference is here, in fact, to address some of the daunting challenges. We know piracy, arm robbery, drug trafficking, smuggling of arms, human trafficking, illegal fishing, and potential maritime terrorism against port infrastructure. Ladies and gentlemen, in Mauritius, recently, for the last year, we have seized hundreds of kilos of heroin. And the drug problem in the Indian Ocean, in the southwest of the Indian Ocean, is also becoming a scourge. So when we see the daunting challenges, this can only be addressed when we fight all that is illegal together. And the foundation today has done, the conference today is bringing us all together. 
big nations, small nations, small island developing states, which are so vulnerable, like the Maldives, like the Seychelles, and like Mauritius, bringing us together with countries of Asia, India, Sri Lanka, to address those scourges. I would like also, on behalf of the countries of the Southwest Indian Ocean, address the issue of extending to the coastline states of Africa, Kenya, Mozambique, Tanzania, extending to them this partnership so that next time at the conference, we can have representatives of these Indian Ocean states which share in common some of the threats and most of the challenges. Mauritius has been the chair of the contract group to fight piracy off the coast of Somalia for two years now. And uh, Kenya is taking over in January. And we all agree today that if you have the threat of piracy in the region of the Gulf of Aden, if you have the Detroit of Ormuz, the threat to the transportation of oil, petroleum products is going to be there and it will be a major concern for strong big economies like India, China, Korea, and Japan. So I would like to reiterate the, the call of my colleague from the Seychelles to help us at the contact group to fight this issue of piracy. Otherwise, there will be no security in the northern part of the, uh, of the Indian Ocean uh, for the trade and for uh, maritime exchanges. Ladies and gentlemen, Mauritius is supporting the political dialogue with the neighboring countries, as I said, and we have the Indian Ocean Commission, which is the regional body linking all the islands of the Southwest Indian Ocean, which has become the permanent structure around which this fight against piracy is being now organized. We organized a maritime security conference in 2017. In 2018, and now we are going to organize, we organize, in fact, in 2018 and 2019, and we are going to organize a third maritime security conference next year, and we would like to invite the foundation and all the member states here to participate in that summit uh, in 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, let me now just say a few words about surveillance. We have, Mauritius has 2.7 million kilometers of sea. And a small island like Mauritius will never be able to have the means to have proper surveillance of that area. So this can also only happen if we are together and uh, we can help each other to be able to monitor what is happening in the, in, this, in the region. Ladies and gentlemen, as it comes to climate change, a lot has been said, a lot is being said, but what is most important is what action is being taken. And the most internationally agreed way forward is the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. So can we have a common front on how we can contribute to achieve the set objectives as regards to climate change? the Samoa pathway and the Paris Agreement on climate change so that we can really act and bring results. The more so as the threats to the small island developing states is really there, as we know for the Maldives, for the Seychelles, and for Mauritius. As regards to marine pollution, and in, until recently we have been looking at the sea as an area so vast that it took a long time for us to realize that we can also pollute it to the extent that we put the existing ecosystem at stake. The ecosystems of the Western Indian Ocean area where we are is recognized as one of the 30th hotspots of global biodiversity. And with respect to marine pollution, we would like to, to address these the following issues fighting pollution from the maritime sector. 
We should ensure that all stakeholders comply with the International Convention for the Control and Management of Ships, Ballast, Water and Sediments. Secondly, I think that we should have not been taken adequate measures to reduce plastic pollution. We know that there's a continent of plastic in the southern part of the Indian Ocean and we have to fight it and see how we could stop the current trend of marine pollution by plastic and reverse it as soon as possible. Let me say a few words before I end on terrorism. Radicalization, phenomena and departures towards the instability zones in the Middle East have alerted states to the potential terrorist threat at the regional level. In addition, terrorist networks have gained a foothold in several areas of the region, leading to insecurity and increased risks. This is a very sensitive area. However, we believe that a regional maritime security strategy on to counter terrorism can be done along the following planks. First, a regional mechanism for consultation and exchange of information, intelligence. Second, terrorism-related financial and commercial flows should be contained. Third, fight against terrorist propaganda and violent extremism on the internet. Fourth, assessing the level of the terrorist risk in the region and degree of state preparedness to facilitate a concerted regional approach. And fifth, to enhance capacity building of member states in their oversight of security threats, including sharing of expertise and best practices. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have pillars of cooperation. We have the India-Africa dialogue. We have the China-Africa dialogue. We just had the Japan-Africa TICAD meeting in Tokyo. And all have the same challenge, is to bridge Asia and Africa. Through cooperation, understanding, exchange of information. And we know that Africa is the next continent of opportunities for investment, for trade, for infrastructure. So the shores of the Indian Ocean, and as this, the shores of the Indian Ocean are going to become geopolitically a challenge, but at the same time, an opportunity. So this conference could also help to bridge Asia and Africa. And I would like next time that they would request the conference, the foundation, to see to it that the member states of Africa are also present so that we can build a bridge of cooperation and understanding and prosperity between Asia and Africa. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>